You know what I said last time about these Nazis not being full-blown Nazis? Forget it. This episode they become full-blown Nazis. That's all for the better. Again, thank you, CW, for having the for having more guts than most films or video games these days that are supposedly aimed at a older audience than your shows. <laughs> finally conscious, but a lot of good that does is, is he and everyone else is locked in the pipeline. Or they have superpowers or not. The only ones who have escaped are Iris and Felicity, who are in the ducks, which Iris somehow knows like the back of her hand. Does she spend all her free time climbing around into ducks between episodes and we just were never told or shown that before? How, how how does she know her way around the ducts of Star Labs? I don't get it. Ugh. What has she been doing that she knew? And, by the way, Star Labs, the cleanest, most comfortable air ducts you will ever see. So, uh, yeah. For your next infiltration, Spy, he's from... For, Spy's playing a multiplayer game of... Uh, of Splinter Cell, choose Star Labs. But anyway, so it's just Iris and Felicity. And despite that girl power episode, now they're behaving in a realistic fashion, wanting to know how they trying to figure out how they'll uh, take care of an army of Nazis who have Supergirl tied down and being exposed to red sunlight. Yeah, it turns out, um, it's going to take a while. So Red Sunlight doesn't instantly make her skins, her skin soft. So, yeah, Reverse Flash, a eh, Nazi girl and Green Nazi are going to have to wait for, for her. So, yeah, she is getting the worst tan ever. But one thing you can say about Red Sunlight for Kryptonians is it's the one time where your constant exposure to the sun actually makes your skin softer instead of tougher. So there is that. And meanwhile, the rest of our heroes are in a concentration camp. Emp on Earth X, of course. And they all have power they all have power dampening collars on. In, including including Sarah and ah, I'm forgetting I'm blanking on her name right now but you know Supergirl's adopted sister They're bo they both have collars on which puzzles them at first but not but not when uh, c the commandant of the prison turns up Turns out Sarah is getting a bit of what her dad has been having to deal with since last season. And that is the commandant of the prison is is Quentin Lance's doppelganger from Earth X. Which is which is uh which is it's not so odd, except that, well, he speaks with a German accent. Nobody else around here speaks like a German accent. I don't know why he's the only one with a with a fake German accent. And I don't know. 
just because the Nazis won doesn't mean he was German. That that wouldn't make sense. I don't I don't get it. But anyway, yeah. And here's the thing to talk about. One of the Achilles heels of this story. He seems to be utterly obsessed with the Nazis' hatred of gays and not really anyone else. In fact, if you go by this story, the Nazis hated gays were some were only a tiny bit annoyed by Jews and and they didn't have a they didn't have a problem with they didn't really have a problem with blacks, Slavs, or communists or or people of mixed races, since you don't see any of them in the concentration camps or being victims of the Nazis. As I said to this up in the intro, as to the episode's credit, the Nazis are are expressing utter disgust at at some things where where it's appropriate, but I feel like it doesn't go far enough. And what's more, it comes off as it, so when you single out one group as being the main one the Nazis hate, it does two things. It makes it feel sound like you're saying that the Nazis are only are only bad because they because they hated this particular group, and it makes it feel and it makes it feel like you're preaching a message on behalf of that group. The former just makes you come off as uninformed. The latter makes it makes it feel like you're saying that this group is being treated similarly now, except in the United States, except they're not. They have a right to get married, they are protected by civil rights laws, and it, uh, they are shown on television all the time, and comic everywhere. You can't get away from it, so I don't get it. I don't get it at all what they're trying to preach here. I have no idea. And if it's that some people still say that homosexuality is immoral, I would just like to point out there's a difference between saying somebody is doing something immoral and saying that you want them sent to a gas chamber. Some people don't seem to understand it that in this day and age, but there is a huge difference. For instance, I would say anyone who anyone who who steal, who robs a convenience store is is doing something immoral, but that doesn't mean that I want to see them all killed or that I think they're beyond redemption or that I hate the person for doing that. You see you see where the difference is. And being that that's and being that even saying it's immoral will get most people ostracized these days there aren't that many people even saying it's immoral, so I don't get why this episode is preaching what it's preaching exactly. Oh, well, it takes up a small... Yeah, it's taking up a small amount of runtime. It just sort of bugs you. The issue comes up because Sarah claims that she was dumped in the camp. When asked why she was dumped in the camps when she's an example of an Aryan, she says that it's because she's bi. Except that's not true. That's not true. Because she was put in there for killing Nazis. Plain and simple. There's no evidence that, any, that, any, that anyone from her effects even knew she was bi. There, there's no... And, uh, and they didn't say that was why they were putting her there before they sent her there, so how she knows this, I don't know. So how she knows this, if he was put there, how they know it, why she would think that. I mean, the rest of the heroes aren't by, so what are they doing here? Alex! Alex, that's, that's Supergirl's sister. I knew it was uh, what I, I knew it was something that was normally a guy's name. I just couldn't place it. Um, but anyway, uh, so anyway, the commandant has them taken out, and in a scene that's uh, rather intense and brutal, and this is what I mean when I say they're getting the Nazis right. He has them stand next to a open grave, 
and has a squad ready to shoot them. This was how the Nazis started exterminating people in the early days, and what what in the, and what caused the final solution. It turns out that that there were two things, two things that the uh, Gestapo concluded while trying to uh, exterminate people this way. One, on their minds, it was too slow, and two, so having having even the most hardcore Nazis, Nazi sol soldiers or Gestapo or SS men just round up and shoot people, shoot people in this manner directly, was eventually wearing them down, and some of, and their men were starting to have breakdowns with the, no matter how much propaganda they put into them, it was causing their men to start having breakdowns, and because of what they were doing. In other words, it was so abhorrent they had to find some way to soften it, and that's what, and that's what the when we think of Nazi death camps with the gas chambers, that's what it, that's what it was, that's one of the that's one of the purposes according to the Nazi hierarchy that those were built to serve was to was to make it indirect and more clean, was to make it indirect and more clean so that so that no one was directly pulling the trigger so they couldn't have. So they would be less le so they would be less likely to have pangs of conscience. But the squad is stopped by Captain Cold's doppel Urfex doppelganger, who who freezes them with a gun, eh, who freezes them with his freeze gun, of course, and they then take cover along with along with the another prisoner they were brought out with, and. Captain Cold, I have to say, for a show that's trying to be progressive, he is the biggest gay stereotype this side of Captain Jack from from Doctor Who. And I and it's just like wow. He, the first line that he says though is remark is him getting visually and audibly actually excited by seeing the Flash's suit. It's like, wow. For a show that's trying to say that it's, oh, that gays are no different than us, and normally doesn't treat, and normally doesn't do anything with Sarah Lance B being by doesn't treat her any differently. This is just, it just feels way off. It just feels off. I'm sorry, but it does. It does. And for the rest of the story, they'll have him constantly making out with the prisoner who he, who is who he came to rescue, who, spoilers, Nova. It's the superhero Nova from Earth X. Well, actually, he's from Earth 1, as we later find out. Although, how or why he came to Earth X in the first place, we don't find out. But anyway, they have him constantly making out with him and just being, he just, don't get me wrong, there are times when the Captain Cold from Urfex works, but there are other times when I'm just like, really? Is this character supposed to be a joke? Is he a joke being made in the 1970s? I don't get it. If you're, I mean... Is this supposed to be progressive? Is it supposed? Is it supposed to be laugh at the gay guy? I don't get it, and I'm not. And ooh, I'm not saying which of the two I prefer. I just say that what I, it just seems it just seems weird and out of place with the tone of the rest of the ep, of the rest of the next two of this and the next episode. So anyway. They escape to the resistance headquarters. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Iris and Felicity manage to knock out two Nazis, and they try, and they, but they find that they can't get the, the, the uh, pipeline open, so they can't rescue everyone and get them out of the cells. So they do the next best thing, and just as the operation is supposed is supposed to go on as a we as a weakening Nazi girl is getting closer and closer to death. She uh, 
they Felicity manages to knock out the power and they can't do the operational emergency backup power. So the Nazis are stalled. Old Earth 1. However, on Earth X, Captain Cold brings our heroes to the to the to the headquarters for the resistance. And and uh and our hero and our heroes are hap are happy that the resistance can explain to them that there's a portal to their world that can be turned off and on. However, what they aren't so happy to hear is that the resistance plans to blow it up, blow it up real good. Their logic being that since Green Nazi is the Führer and and Nazi Girl is the strongest weapon for for the Nazis. Well, if they blow up the portal, then they're stuck on Earth-1 with, with a portion of their army. So, that ought to make their job a lot easier. I mean, it's much easier to resist a government that has no leadership and just lost its biggest weapon. Captain Cold surprisingly sides with the strangers. I guess because his lower is from Earth One. I don't know. I I think that's what they're going for. I, I'm not sure. Uh, if I were him, I wouldn't have brought them there. I would worry that the whole thing had been a setup to get a bunch of super-powered people into into the headquarters. But whatever. Um, but still, the resistance sees this as too good an opportunity to waste. I mean, they've been living under Nazi occupation for about 70 years at this point, and this is their first chance to uh, cut off the head. So, then back at the, then back at the base, then back at the base, while the power is low, the, they try, Iris and Felicity tried to break Supergirl out, but they get, but they get caught, um, and, and Green Nazi and Reverse Flash are about to kill them, when, when Supergirl volunteers to stop resisting the procedure, if they'll just, if they, if they just won't kill them. So they keep them around to use as leverage. Meanwhile, meanwhile at the, meanwhile at the, meanwhile at the resistance headquarters, our heroes finally point out that hey, you can still launch your attack to destroy the, to destroy the portal, but we'd le but why not let a why not why can't we just go in and and try to get through it? The resistance, of course, points out that this would be suicidal. Our heroes then point out that. Uh, duh, we have a guy who looks just like the Fuhrer, and if you know anything about Nazis, you know that nobody questions the Fuhrer. So, yeah, that's their plan. Captain Cold, Captain Cold and Nova use stolen Nazi uniforms and a truck to escort them to, to where, to where uh, the Nazis have a portal. But the resistance isn't willing to call off the timetable for their strike, so they have limited time. Oliver po poses as the Fuhrer and manages to see that a Nazi t that a Nazis have built their own version of the Wave Rider. It then goes through the portal and and to go to Earth to go to Earth One. The he is then caught. He is then caught. Bob Oliver is then caught because they bring in Felicity, and this is the only time we they mention that the Nazis are shown to have anything against Jewish people in the whole story. And um, yeah, it turns out Urfex Felicity was Hant was giving her food rations and to children being kept in the work camp, and it seems that. It seems that Green Nazi likes executing prisoners. However, he falls for an obvious trap. 
Yeah, I saw this coming a mile away. Yeah. If you've read any spy novels or anything about Nazis or communists, then you would know about the empty gun trick. If there's sufficient of you, as Quentin Lance is, he they're gonna give you they're gonna give you the test of kill one of your kill one of your own to prove you're one of them. This is what they do. If I bring out Felicity, but Oliver then turns the gun and fires it and tries to fire it at Quentin Lance, proving that he's not the Fuhrer. The uh, gun, of course, is empty because if you're testing someone's loyalty, why would you give them a, a loaded gun? Think about it. You wouldn't. Here's what you do if the, um, with the empty gun trick. Point out the person, and if you're a good enough shot like Oliver is, you get the aim just off so the bullet will just pass by them and you pull the trigger. That way, if a gun is loaded, you've missed, but nobody ever hits 100%. Not even standing, not even standing, not even standing around six feet away. You you don't always hit a target. So, uh, yeah. Then you know if the gun is loaded or not. But you always pull the trigger because nine times out of ten it's not going to be loaded. Both the Nazis and the Communists like this trick, and I always want to slap myself whenever I see a hero fall for this on a TV show or movie because I'm like, idiot, you're not reading the right books, are you? <sighs> so anyway, a big fight breaks out there. Meanwhile, the uh, Nazi wave rider arriving on Earth One alerts the alerts the heroes wave rider and the uncaptured legends begin an attack on Star Labs. This free this ends up freeing the rest of our heroes from the pipeline, and the Nazis are forced to retreat from are forced to retreat from Star Labs. They have well are forced to go on a retreat from Starla, but things aren't things still aren't looking up. Back in back in back in Earth, on Earth X, Jax and Stein need to split up to throw some witches to get through the portal because the Nazis are pouring in and also Red Tornado is headed for the facility to destroy it. Barry and Barry and Nova go out to try and stop him, but they don't have any success. And with them surrounded by Nazis, with their fast and bulletproof heroes surrounded, surrounding them, Jax manages to throw the switch, throw the circuits for opening the portal on his side. However, however, everyone else is pinned down, and the only one who can get to the switch is Stein. And these, oh. Yes, but at least Stein doesn't go down without a fire. He takes about a bajillion bullets because Victor Garber doesn't go down any other way, but he manages to throw the but he manages to throw the switch. But he still gets but he still gets shot and is left there dying while Barry and Nova are still battling the Red Tornado and there's still a battle going on at Star Labs. This episode is pretty good. It's 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 very good. It's not really a Flash episode so much as another episode in this story, as there's nothing really related to the Flash going on in it, but there's lots of action, and apart from my personal problems with the with some of the focus, I think, being on the wrong places in the story, and the fact, and, and, well, I think you all know how I feel about this by the next episode, it does a pretty good job. So I'm giving this episode 7.5 out of 10. Good episode of The Flash.